In the last video, we learned about the different methods of passing data from the view to the controller. After the data is submitted, we need to perform validations on the data because without proper validation, users might enter incorrect or incomplete data, causing other errors later. For example, without validation, when a user enters an invalid email format, the system is not able to send an email to that user. So, how do we perform validations? In this video, we'll unveil the five different methods of doing validations in ASP.NET Core MVC. If you want to copy the code that is shown in this video, you can click the first link in the description below. Okay, let's get started. Number one, model validation using data annotations. This is the basic and simplest way to add validation. Let's say we have a user model. We have three fields here. The name and email are required, meaning that empty or null values are not allowed. So we can add the required data annotation to these two fields. The email must be in the correct format. To validate email address format, we can add the email address data annotation for it. Besides required and email address, these are some other basic data annotations used for validations. Talking about data annotations, actually not only can we use them for validations, but they also serve other purposes. For example, we can specify the display format, the label, and so on. Next, validation method two, custom validation attributes. Sometimes data annotation is not enough. This is why we use custom validation attributes. Let's say we wanna ensure that a username is unique in the database. First, create a custom validation attribute. We'll name it unique username attribute, which inherits from validation attribute. What is validation attribute? It's a built-in base class used to create custom validation rules in ASP.NET Core. Then, override the isValid method to implement custom validation logic. Next, get the database context so we can access the tables from the database to check the availability of the username. Lastly, we can return a validation error message if the username already exists in the database. Otherwise, it will return validation result success. Now we can apply this unique username custom validation to the model like this. Validation method number three, fluent validation. To use this, first, we need to install the NuGet package. Then, we can create a new class called user validator, which inherits from abstract validator. Abstract validator comes from fluent validation and is used to define validation rules for a specific model. Then, we can start to add all the validation rules for the user model. First, we're going to validate the name field. The name field is required. In fluent validation, use not empty to validate a required field. We can also validate the maximum length. In this case, we only allow a maximum of 50 characters for the name. For email, we can use email address to validate the email format. Then for integer values, we can use inclusive between to ensure the number is between a range. Other validations for integers include greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal, not equal, exclusive between, and must. After creating the user validator, we must register it in program.cs like this. So why use fluent validation? Fluent validation is more readable, flexible, and easy to manage compared to data annotations. Data annotations only support simple rules like required, string length, and range. But fluent validation supports conditional logic, multiple field validation, and external API calls. So, to implement both simple validation rules and complex rules, we can choose to use simple data annotations plus custom validation attributes to perform the validations. Alternatively, we can directly use fluent validation to handle all the validations in one place. Validation method number four, manual validation in controller. Besides the methods mentioned previously, we can also validate the data manually in the HTTP POST method in the controller. Here is the code example. Here, we can add any custom validations like this. Besides, we can also apply validation conditionally. For example, validate alternate contact only if the phone number is null or white space. By the way, this kind of conditional validation can be achieved using fluent validation too. 
This is the fluent validation example of conditional validation. Okay, lastly, we can also use JavaScript or jQuery validations. The benefit of JavaScript or jQuery validations is that the user can get immediate validation feedback without submitting the form. This is an example of JavaScript validation. However, there is also a disadvantage to use JavaScript validations because some users can easily bypass the validations. For example, they can use the dev tools in the browser to delete the JavaScript validations. So, although JavaScript validation is great for user experience, it's always good to validate on the server side. That's a wrap. We covered a lot today. Here's a quick recap. Data annotations for simple validations. Custom validation attributes for unique scenarios. Fluent validation for better readability and flexibility. Manual validation in the controllers. Client-side validation. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Happy coding!